Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and in today's video for what has been dubbed Trilobite Week slash Trilobite Month or Trilobite February by the Paleo community, I've decided to start a video series on one of the most fascinating, if overlooked and underappreciated, group of extinct animals, trilobites. Me and my brother have always loved going to the Mississippi Museum of Natural Science and seeing many of these little critters, as well as the various mineral shows that have popped up from time to time. And I hope that I can give you a similar appreciation for the wonderful animals that these guys are. Before I start, I do feel I need to say a few things. I know this may seem somewhat of a random video topic for some of my subscribers, but I've always made nature-related videos for my channel, and if you're an old fan, you might remember my old Elephant Evolution series. It's the oldest videos I'm still proud of, as well as my first completed video series. I am a biology major, and frankly, I've wanted to return to my roots for some time. Don't worry, though. If you are a fan of my LEGO reviews or my Ninja Argo lore video series, I shall be resuming those once this video series is over. And to those who might say that my next video series after the Kirby Rapid Gacha Retrospective was meant to be on the Drunken Peasants, you'd be correct. But the retrospective is taking far longer than I thought it would. Don't worry, though. Those goobers will get what they deserve in time. One last thing I wish to discuss will being the structure of this video series. Unlike with elephants and other tetrapod megafauna I eventually intend to cover, like rhinos, where covering a group chronologically is the best in that it accurately reflects how they evolve over time. Instead, I shall be first starting with their origin slash what exactly a trilobite is. Then I will be doing a video explaining the many terms that are needed when discussing invertebrates as opposed to tetrapods, as there's a lot of specific terms in really all arthropod groups as well as invertebrate groups as a whole that are not quite the same as tetrapods, and as such, I believe, f need some level of explanation. From there, I will be then giving each of the 11 orders their own video, and ending it with a coverage of their extinction and their relationship with humanity and culture. But I think that's enough of an intro. Let us now answer that question, being, what is a trilobite, and where they fit on the tree of life? Now, in order to answer the question of what exactly a trilobite is, we have to go long before trilobites or even arthropods exist. The animal kingdom is divided roughly into two groups, not counting you know, sponges and jellyfish, those being the durotostomes and the protostomes. These two groups are distinguished by a very fundamental development history. You see, when a person or any other creature is a baby, they're originally just a ball of cells, and then that cells develops a hole from which several organs develop. In the case of duratostomes, that is the anus. And this group includes chordates and starfish, as well as some other more obscure relatives. It and protostomes split off about 600 million years ago or earlier, and protostomes, this hole becomes the mouth instead of the anus. It itself is divided into two groups, the spiralia, which includes mollusks, flatworms, erotifers, and other obscure animals, and then, relevant to us, there is the etzizoa, which includes such things as nematodes, and relevant for us, the panarthropoda. Panarthropoda is separated from its nematode-like relatives by the presence of segmented bodies, uh, ladder-like ventral nervous systems, and paired appendages, instead of being legless. As for arthropods themselves, which, you know, most people watching probably know what those are, you know, houseflies and such, they are distinguished from their relatives, the water bears, as well as the velvet worms, by the presence of an exoskeleton of chitin, distinct body segments, and a pair of jointed legs. 
They diverged from their close relatives, the velvet worms, sometime during the earliest Cambrian, or slightly before, around 538.8 or more million years ago. To put that in perspective, that is over 300 million years before the first dinosaurs. And, by the way, velvet worms back then were far stranger than they are now, like living hallucinations. That could frankly be their own video series, but for now, let's focus on arthropods. The animals had an explosion of diversity, many of which are currently mysterious in terms of placement, like the elegant Marella morphs and the superficially trilobite strabopids. But more important for us are that the arthropods are generally divided into four groups. First, there is the silicerates, which includes such animals like spiders, scorpions, harvestmen, which I've made a video on if you're interested, and the superficially trilobite like horseshoe crabs. This group is distinguished by the presence of silicerates, which are a modified front pair of legs. Then there are a pair of group that are often put into the subphylum mandibulata for the presence of mandibles that are modified limbs from the third pair of legs, and antenna instead of silicerates. These two groups are the myriapods, better known as millipedes and centipedes, and their extinct relatives, some of which included the largest terrestrial arthropods of all time, Arthropleura. The other and third group of living arthropods is the pancrustacea, which includes both crustaceans like shrimps, lobsters, and crabs, as well as insects, which, if you didn't know, are actually descended from crustaceans that went onto the land, reduced their many pairs of legs down to three, and in one group gained wings, which allowed them to fly, and they are a form of modified gills, interestingly enough. Examples of insects include, you know, houseflies, ladybugs, and beetles. But it is within the fourth and final group in which we find trilobites, as well as their closest kin, that can help us figure out how exactly they developed. Ardeopoda is distinguished by the presence of antenna, while the remaining limbs are completely unspecialized in any way. How exactly they relate to the other three major groups of arthropods is heavily debated. Sometimes ardeopods are grouped with silicerates like spiders into a group called arachnomorpha. Other times they're grouped with myriapods and crustaceans in a group called antinulata based on the presence of antenna. Sometimes they are grouped with the morella morphs in a grouped card lamelpedia. However, all of these are relatively controversial due to conflicting evidence and frankly a lack of really good fossils. Let us shift fully to the arteopods themselves. They are divided into two groups. The difference is being pretty hard to see, but basically it all revolves on whether they have a posterior segment lacking legs. If they have that, they are the visicaudata, which includes the rather oval chelonids, the possibly invalid paraphyletic group known as the xenopods, and the aglaspids, which are the most interesting member of this group. Formerly regarded as primitive silicerates, as you can see, they look quite a bit like very interesting looking horseshoe crabs. Of course, later on it was revealed by several very deep anatomical studies, far too dense to get into in this video, that instead that they were likely arteopods. They also have a rather interesting diversification pattern, being the most diverse and radiating during the later Cambrian period, in between the famous Cambrian explosion and the less well-known but equally impressive Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event a period that is otherwise not known for much. The late Cambrian was, in general, considered somewhat of a respite in terms of biodiversification. But for now, let us go to the other half of this group, which we find trilobites and their closest kin, many of which were, until recently, very poorly understood, and for a long time, trilobites were classified on their own. How these new groups were only discovered thanks to the discovery of Langerskotten-type formations. These are formations where 
soft tissues and animals that lack a mineralized skeleton can be found. Usually you can't find those, but there are a few that we now know of, especially in the Cambrian of both the Burgess Shale in Canada as well as China. First of this group to split off from the others are the Xandarellidae. They are most distinguished from other trilobitomorphs by the lack of a significant tail shield. Some of them are blind, some of them had eyes. Overall, they are relatively forgettable, but they are interesting because they show what the ancestral form likely resembled in some manner. Next, splitting off in the next closest to trilobites, we see the order Necataspida, which consists of three closely related families. The Neroidae, which completely lacked any form of segmentation between the head and tail region. The Eumacaridae, which were a very small family, only consisting of two genera found in what is now Australia's kangaroo island and they only had a few segments between their head and tail region and then we have the lewidae which are sometimes considered a subfamily of the neroidae but other sources consider them their own family and as do i as they have numerous segments and they do kind of closely resemble trilobites if you look at them Indeed, initially, this order, the Necataspida, were sometimes classified as a sort of soft body trilobite on the basis of similar legs, gill configuration to true trilobites, and due to lacking eyes, their similarities to the order Agnostida, which are themselves an order that is very controversial within trilobites, but I'll get to that when I cover that order. However, it, further research has shown that these similarities are likely due to a combination of basal traits that both groups have, the secondary eye loss in the agnostides, and the two groups fundamentally differ in how they develop. Trilobites, when they grow, add additional segments, albeit in agnostids it's usually only a few, whereas with neroids, they grow the individual segments. They don't add additional segments, unlike trilobites, which do. So now they're no longer considered closely related to trilobites, as we now have two others that are even more closely related to them than these guys are. We then come to the closest relatives of trilobites, being two families that are generally considered to form their own group, though they haven't given the status of order yet, even though I argue they deserve it. First, there are the Tegopeltidae, which are a pair of really large arthropods that seem to have secondarily lost all their segments, instead bearing a single dorsal shield that protects their bodies. Despite this, we know that they are closely related to trilobites due to their leg structure, as well as some development we know about them. And then we come to the Helmetidae. As you can see, they quite closely resemble trilobites, with divisions of their bodies in a manner that's quite simple to trilobites, albeit not quite as developed. They also have a distinct head, thorax, and tail shield. And finally, after enough weight, we come to the trilobites themselves in the class Trilobita. Ironically enough, we often consider trilobites to be these sort of primitive relics, replaced by the more advanced crustaceans and insects, etc., etc. However, if we really look at them in the context of how they evolve, we realize that trilobites are actually the latest in a much larger group of artiopods, and they're actually relatively advanced, all things considered. The class Trilobita is itself divided into 11 orders. The basal red delicids, the tiny and blind agnostids, the standard corynexids, the well-eyed phacopids, the spiny lichida, the even more spiny odontopleurida, the horseshoe crab like harpida, the deep-dwelling traniculida, the controversial pycnoparids, and the diverse acephitas, and finally the last trilobites, the protida. 
Don't worry if you don't recognize those names. We're going to eventually cover all of those orders in time. We also shall be going more into detail for the terms often used by trilobite specialists next time. But to answer the question, what is a trilobite? Trilobites are arthropods that are not particularly closely related to any group of living arthropods and are part of a group called Artiopoda, of which they were the most derived and not primitive groups. And they have distinct segments and heavily calcified exoskeletons, which is why they were discovered first. And now you know, so you can answer that question if you are ever asked it. I'm the Dark Mask, Jimmy. Like this video, liked it, but if you loved it, consider liking and subscribing and join me next time on The Tale of the Trilobites. Have a wonderful day. Sorry, man, for